It's Hanoon. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 43 of Foul Play. That is Fantasy Overwatch League Play. I am HeebieGB. I am joined by Teoyama, and that's right, everybody. Your eyes aren't deceiving you. Papa A. Smith is gone and left the keys to the car with the kids. Uh, we are going to hopefully <laughs> steer this car not into a ditch, but into getting you some good fantasy points. That analogy didn't work out. But that's okay. Uh, we had a crazy week of Overwatch last week. Insane upsets. Uh, really competitive matches. So in terms of fantasy points, there's a lot to talk about and a lot to discuss. Uh, and also, one of the websites we kind of depend on is content creators worked this week. And we also, so we essentially have double the content that we normally get to give to you. So very excited <laughs> about that. But before we dig deep into the numbers, statistics that we know you love and that we love as well, uh, A. Smith, you have some, what I like to call conspiracy theories, you'd like to call stone hard facts. Um, lay it on me. <laughs> what are you, what's grinding your gears today? So, um... I'm sorry to the listeners. You can obviously hear that he misses A. Smith very dearly because he just called me A. Smith. But oh shoot, I, yeah. <laughs> A. Smith is A. Smith is gone right now. He's dealing with some things, and we I miss him dearly as well. But I'm I'm not going to refer to Heaps as A. Smith just yet. Maybe a little later. Yeah. Um, <laughs> mistake. But uh, yeah, you know, no, we're Gucci. Um, but yeah, for like our you know our opening thoughts, State of the Union. I wanted to talk about um kind of you know looking at the upsets from this past week uh people were rumoring that you know obviously the the justice looked really good the mayhem looked really good um the defiant suddenly looked really good and uh part of that conversation has to do with you know how teams are suited to 222 mm -hmm. and there's been rumors circulating that um the washington justice crafted their roster for 222 as opposed to goats and um, I think that's an interesting topic to go off of because uh, their one of their coaches, Avala, she kind of confirmed that, um, or not kind of, she she fully confirmed that um, with the Korean Overwatch community. Mm -hmm. She said that they didn't expect goats to last this long, so they had when they had the preseason tryouts, they used a Brigitte ban and a two 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 lock. Um, it's not really clear why they would have a, a Brigitte ban as part of that if they were expecting two two two. But it's interesting that they they practice since the preseason for two two two, and that makes you wonder, you know, why, you know, how how certain teams like if they had that information available to them, then every team must have had that information available to them or that um, expectation. So it's not really clear why they were so much better prepared for two 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 as opposed to a team like NYXL who, you know, has taken a step back in the latter parts of this season. Um, and then on the other side, you know, we see that like, obviously Washington justice, they seem just so ready for two, two, two with, uh, with Corey just popping off so comfortably. Mm -hmm. And um, also the San Francisco shock, even though they were barely playing architect all season long, like now, now that the meta has changed and the roll lock is here, it seems like they've been w ready all along for him to just jump in and start dominating. So I think it just it's an interesting spot to be in and it adds a wrinkle because none of these uh, – this past week was super unexpected and all of the, uh, this, the upsets were very confusing. It's all an absolute mess, but maybe that sheds some light on why things are going on the way they are. Yeah, it could be. I mean – Maybe they just saw the press and knew, like, all right, well, 2 2 is not going to last. There's no way that Blizzard holds up to this pressure from outside forces. Like, they're going to cave eventually. Mm -hmm. Or in, they, uh, in fact, knew that. not going to last. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And maybe, in fact, they knew that 2 2 2 was happening. The league maybe confirmed it with players. But either way, yeah, I. I it explains some confusion, but man, it doesn't explain some teams' difficulties with the 2-2-2 mm -hmm. switch. Like, NYXL is the perfect example. They should be an extremely capable team to deal with this. They have the firepower. It just, 
and the tank line like should easily be able to succeed in this meta i feel like but um mm, not yeah the it's so far it's very strange i think if you knew that roll lock was going to be a thing you would be prepared to have like a kind of a designated dps duo and a designated uh widow maker especially mm -hmm. which nyxl obviously struggles with and they were not prepared for you know yeah. so um that part is pretty strange but it explains why you know like toronto would pick up logics mm -hmm. why uh the justice and mayhem would each be doing so well right now given Corey and saya players skill on widow yeah um but yeah so i mean i'm i'm just really hoping we're going to hear more about like what teams have been expecting and which teams were expecting mm -hmm. uh roll lock to to come about and in particular because i think we're getting to a point in the overwatch league where like we there's enough of a sample size for us to start judging coaches and start you know mm -hmm. wanting those like nba nfl style post-game press conferences where a coach yeah. actually has to explain their their mistakes because i feel like we have accountability for players mm -hmm. but i'm not sure we've seen accountability for coaches yet you know like i i haven't Other heard from reddit, any no. coach. <laughs> yeah and, and even on reddit space. like it's not like like the players are more active on Reddit than the coaches mm -hmm. seem to be. Like yes. a promise from the from the Valiant, he's pretty active and like he'll talk about stuff. But other than him, like I'm not sure what coaches are out there really like yeah. tackling tackling issues and explaining things. You know, like I would yeah. love, absolutely love NYXL's coach to explain why they brought Flower in and then played him on Sombra instead of letting him play Widow. Like, oh it just man. Bizarre. Yeah, it'd be incredible. I would. I really hope that localization br one just brings more uh, media talent to the mm -hmm. Overwatch League. Like, I mean, if you wanted to cover Overwatch League and you live on the East Coast, you have many more chances to do so yep. in person. Get those interviews, however you want to do it. If you're self-creating, if you're working for a website, I think the chances are going to be a lot higher. It's going to create uh maybe not transparency for the league but it's gonna give people a lot i don't know there's gonna be people are gonna be under a microscope more often and uh, more repet uh repeatedly which will be really interesting i'm excited to see that change coming up so yeah, yeah we'll see i no, i too would love to see pavane try to explain the the flower wild card that would be uh <laughs> very exciting to see um yeah. and maybe uh it would be a chance for these late stage bloomer coaches to be like see i told you so please don't <laughs> fire me down to a contender's team i promise yeah. i can stay in this league <laughs> which i'm not sure no, i had i had a to. rationale i had a rationale um but yeah i just think uh overall like conspiracy theory or not it's good to keep in mind um you know how teams are prepared for the roll lock mm -hmm. and because it just goes directly into what teams are prepared for this meta yeah. um and you know obviously we thought the spitfire would be and they seem to be a mess as well but we yeah. can get into that a little bit later and more yeah. specifically with the uh leaders and feeders and etc yeah exactly well what a transition because that's the section that we're going to be headed to next Segway. Teo, you've grown so much you've just nailing these sideways <laughs> uh so for the leaders category in the dps section um we have two players in each category and first i need to mention sure for uh probably the player that made me like overwatch uh but the player that i followed to the gladiators and why i'm now a huge la gladiators fan uh please don't leave next year sure for <laughs> my heart will be broken <laughs> um in combined score he had the top in all categories for dps with 299.19 points and in the best game he got 157 that was good for fifth place uh, Gladiators had two close map fives. Um, in the shock game, I wouldn't say the maps themselves were close, but still going to map five, and if you're sweeping your opponents, you're actually going to be collecting a decent amount of points. So mm -hmm. I'm really impressed with how the Gladiators played this week, and it, it is evident in Sure4 and a couple other players in terms of fantasy points. This might be Sure4's highest scoring game ever. Um, and this is also really interesting it's no longer the widow player that's like been collecting the fantasy points lately. I think the reaper is going to be collecting a lot of fantasy points because I mean it's not going to be the may in a reaper may mm -hmm. composition. So if reapers played, I mean death blossom would obviously score you a lot of points, but just those general left clicks you're going to be scoring a lot of points. So I mean especially yeah. cuz roadhogs in the meta, Arissa's in the meta. So um 
But yeah, I would be looking out to see what teams are playing for Reaper if you were like wanting to change up your fantasy lineup in these last couple of weeks. Yeah, and I'll, alternatively, um, I would say look for the uh, for the Shimada bro because nice. as our other DPS leader proved, uh, the Hanzo and Genji puts in a ton of work, and that's mm -hmm. that's Erster um, from the Atlanta Rain. Like, you know. Every, uh, every so often a team doesn't play during a week and I'm pretty bummed that uh, the rain aren't playing this week because I really mm -hmm. wanted to see if uh, if Erster's um, you know if his if his rain atop the uh, the DPS ladder was going to continue yeah. he uh, he just popped off last week like it was it was really incredible to see um, he he had kind of just become forgotten about as the rain generally had been mm -hmm. and then uh this this meta just like suits him so perfectly his hanzo is nasty mm -hmm. he's getting like genji 5k's left and right yeah. and um yeah i think generally we would expect the the widow reaper to to get a lot of the kills and the damage done especially that reaper just because yeah you can left click a road dog and get easy points yep. um but like when you're when the other DPS, when the the Hanzo potential Genji is popping off, you know, then they're just gonna rack up points because like yeah. the Genji five K happens in like what five ten seconds. Like there, that ult lasts a very short amount of time mm -hmm. and just pulls up a ton of kills if you're good at it. Um, so yeah, Erster, you know, in best on high noon, he had one seventy two point seven, which was uh, top overall, and in combined, he had two eighty seven point seven, which is second overall. So it's just a big week for him. Yeah. And for the rain, let's see. Yeah, neither of those games went to five. So if, yeah, if your pop -off potential is in, that high oh. in four in four maps only, like that's that, that's pretty bonkers. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah, they just they they're really on the up and up and I, I wish they were playing this week so we could see if it could continue or if it was just the eternal and outlaws being bad. Yeah, that could be Man, watching Urshur play Genji, I got man all kinds of vibes. Like I, my jaw hit the floor. I it was incredible. <laughs> like I just, I didn't think that was possible. <laughs> it's so many. It's been so long, but yeah. Urshur uh, paving the way. Uh, so leaders for the tank category, Gods had an incredible week. As did Toronto, ironically. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, we're saying a lot of unexpected things, but if you're not watching Overwatch League, you need to now catch up because the score lines are not wrong on OverwatchLeague.com. It was insane. Gods in the combined score got 290.36. That was first overall. And in best score got 155.53. That was second for tanks overall. I'm not sure we've ever had a tank break 300 points. And I think Gods might have gotten the closest in combined. Uh, um, I wouldn't be surprised if that one Fury week where he played oh, like a ton of yeah. DPS That's was true. the highest. But I think like for gods, especially this week, it was you know they played the dragons mm -hmm. who everybody expects to be monstrous, and then they also played the fusion who in this meta are supposed to be really good. And the fusion game went to five maps, yeah. while the uh, the Shanghai one only went to four. Mm -hmm. um, and you know for him to put up that performance against teams that are known for their their players mechanical talent is pretty impressive yeah. um oh i was awesome and he's just, he's kind of just taken the league by storm recently as the defiant have yeah it's cool and he's obviously kind of become the face of toronto in terms of their publicity and media uh he's trying to you know he's hilarious yeah, he's the guy is incredibly he's funny top, top tier meme lord Oh, man. And, yeah, Meme Lord and just witty, too. Like, oftentimes, I feel like in this day and age, I, I'm i myself, I'm like a, a comedy nerd, as I was describing. Mm -hmm. Like, you can have these Meme Lords that are super funny if you give them 24 hours on the internet. But, like, mm -hmm. Gaunt's is hilarious if you give him a microphone and 10 seconds to answer a question. Like, yeah. I, I really do think that he is, I, I'm so happy he's in the league. This personality is someone we need. We needed someone this funny in the league. I'm yeah, excited. And, I'm, and I'm glad he's doing well, you know. Yeah, like that helps. Because <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a, it's a typical thing with athletes or, you know, esports athletes as well. We're, like, literally just them participating in memes is funny in itself you know mm -hmm. even if they're not that funny right but yeah he's he's actually got jokes yeah, you know it's not funny. it's not just like oh he's participating which is cool it's like no he's actually pretty jokes exactly he helped the toronto win, -win. Um, 
Yeah, and then the uh, the second the second tank leader um, is not as funny, or I, he might be funny. I don't know honestly, but um, he, it's, he's kind it's, of funny. I've watched his stream I, actually; he's pretty funny. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So I, I could trust it, and that's that's note um, on the uh, on the fuel. It, he was actually number one in best for tanks. He had a one sixty nine point eight. Nice. That's um, a, and very uh, nice. In, and in combined, uh, he you know he only had one sixty nine point eight because the fuel only played one game, but it's that's actually particularly impressive considering the fact that the fuel lost one three to the uh, to the valiant. Yeah. Um, so to put up a bunch of points in a loss in uh, in high noon, it, it matters less that you're losing than it does in daily because daily uh, takes more away for your deaths, I think. Mm -hmm for your damage taken something like that um but regardless yeah. like it's it's impressive to see note regain some form because earlier in the season a lot of people were expecting him to be one of the top tanks and he kind of disappeared as the fuel yeah. disappeared but it seems like he's adjusting well to this meta and hopefully it's a sign of things to come and yeah. a sign of the, the fuel becoming a better a better team I would I would argue that I don't think Note ever disappeared. I think the fuel started having main tank issues when OGE decided that he needed a break, and they brought in Trill. Their DPS lineup was shaky. I think yeah. the support line and Note have been pretty consistent performers for the fuel. But yeah, it's hard to notice a good player on a really bad team. So exactly, I, like the, I do the see that flex tanks. So I mean, look at Mecco last week. Like the flex mm. tank on a struggling team just kind of becomes nothing you yeah, know that's so true it's, it's a tough spot to be in well i will always be proud of no i'm pumped he made team canada again i'm pumped we're running that roster <laughs> back for the world cup i'm super excited i think it's gonna be a really really fun world cup to watch for me personally yep. being a, a canadian citizen still living <laughs> in this crazy united states so uh but the support leaders category i'm gonna take shaz uh, of course, because he uh, is the jersey I wish to buy soon. Um, in his combined score, 350.12 points. And in best score, 187.53. Unbelievable week. Again, we've already talked about it. Gladiator scored incredibly well. Shaz has been playing more... Either one of the teams that sticks to Zen a little bit more, I feel like, than some of these teams, mm -hmm. and not just opting to be always Anna all the time. So, Gladiators are going to be still scoring a ton of points in the flex support category. So, very pumped to see Shaz here, uh, number one in both combined and best format. So, that's always a big gold star win for the Shaziator. That's yeah, not a, that's he, not a good nickname. We, we we can drop that. Never mind. It, yeah, we'll yeah, work, we'll work on something else. But I, I mean, it's kind of fun. Maybe that'll be like a backup a backup nickname or something. Yeah, man. I, yeah, the we'll, coolest we'll, backup nicknames we'll in high school. File it away and bring it back. <laughs> um, yeah, but no, Shaz is an absolute monster, and he has been all season. Like his mm -hmm. Zen is easily top three in the league. Um, I guess that's arguable, but I, I think yeah, like, easily. Just, I'm not sure sun. it's the term, but I easily, yeah, it's hard, it's hard to to pin one down easily. But he's he's just been a he's been a problem all year. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second uh, the second support leader is uh, Boombox. He put up 302 in combined and 151.4 in uh, best, which is good for second and fourth respectively. Um, and yeah, Boombox like. Again, he he's one of the he actually suffered from something similar to note where like when the fusion weren't playing well, he kind of seemed to disappear a little mm -hmm. bit just because it's hard to be the the flex the flex support getting kills and getting points while you have to try and heal up Carpe who's struggling to play Zarya, you know. Yeah. So it, he was in a tough spot, but now that the meta has kind of shifted in their favor a little bit, he's he's back to popping off. Mm -hmm. And I actually think it's pretty interesting to. Uh, just looking at both of these guys, like the majority of their points obviously come on uh, Zen rather than Ana. So this week I was pretty curious to look at, you know, flex support versus main support because a lot of the main supports were playing the Baptiste mm -hmm. while the flex support was running Ana. You know, so you would expect the uh, the boombox boombox on Ana to have less points than Neptuno on Baptiste possibly, just because Baptiste has a little bit more DPS potential than Ana does. Right. Um, and you know, 
that that seems to have not been the case or the zen the zen points outweighed uh everything else enough that flex supports are still on top of the on top of the leaderboard so zen overall and your flex support is almost uh moira is almost always going to get played by your flex support yeah. too and that is another character that is healing is matched by her damage output and and can do like incredible amounts and when those are the two point scoring categories then you're like that's going to net you more points than your other typical character but yeah. if coalescence 100%. heals and damages and you get that ultimate like every 10 seconds it seems like then that's going to be a really really big point score so mm -hmm. Uh, I think that is why we're seeing flex supports kind of sitting at the top. I think Moira is just giving them the little bit of the edge they need right now to stay above. But yeah, uh, so... two two of the three heroes that they're playing are going to be getting more points than the main support. It'll just be interesting to keep in mind, like if if uh, the main if the meta goes strictly to Ana Baptiste, you know, or if one team starts playing mostly Ana Baptiste, then we'll probably see that that point differential between main and flex uh, yeah. decrease a little bit. Yeah, that could be true. I look forward to it if it does, because that would be quite the fantasy shakeup. It would be very <laughs> exciting. Um, so we talked a lot about good supports. Uh, why don't we just throw a bone to the bad supports this week? So I'm going to talk about both of the supports here, and then you can take a, a different category, Teo. Beautiful. Um, Bebe got 97.66 points, didn't even break 100 when he's the flex support for, well, admittedly, uh, Hangzhou is probably one of the worst teams that has won the switch into 2 2 2. Uh, admittedly, guessed by most of the community, me not included, I had too much faith in their DPS players. Mm -hmm. uh, that was ill put. My apologies, listeners. Um, but <laughs> Bebe getting 97.66, that is so rough. Hagopian also getting less than 100 in his best game, getting 98.58. Florida doing better? Not really. Um, and Agapian yeah. is just not um, not cutting it. So two flex supports getting underneath 100 points. Like, come on, those are main support numbers. So you're really, like, uh, I would, very concerning to own those two. I would touch on that just to say, like, um, unlike Hagopian, who, you know, lost some playing time to a BRAM or Byram, I'm not sure mm -hmm. how you pronounce yeah. it, um, I would say the, the Bebe thing is particularly concerning because he was – seeding playing time to um who is it revenge yeah i forget who their other flex support is he was seeding playing time to him earlier this year but in their game against the charge he played all four maps and he still only put up 97 points so that's that's really unideal um yeah. and just not not a great sign Ooh. and then yeah as for hagyopan like they they had a great week you know they they had a really competitive week so for him to still not crack 100 is pretty alarming mm -hmm. and yeah like um, you said admittedly is giving up maps to to another player but i mean hagopin is someone that we've talked about that is one of those they're on a bad team but you can feel somewhat comfortable playing them because i mean if you have flex supports on your fantasy roster you want to play flex supports but yeah. if you um man i hagopin would be one i would be concerned about not necessarily oh man, maybe i'm putting over a main support if i think the competition is going to be that competitive and maybe baptiste but yeah i don't know but Enough about supports. Teo, why don't you talk to me about tanks? Um, yeah, I will in one second. I'm just double-checking Hagopian's maps on uh, their game against the Justice. Mm -hmm. um, just to see if he played all five. And he played all five maps, and he still didn't put up over 100. That's, oh, pretty, that's pretty disappointing. Yikes. And then yeah, against the Spitfire, I don't. He, they played only four maps, but okay. that's whatever. He still should have put up over a hundred. Yeah. Um, yeah. So as for feeding tanks, um, yeah, the first one is a heartbreaker. It is a uh, Guswa. He on the you know he represents the Hong, Hangzhou Sparks issues right now. They are kind of a team in a downward spiral, mm -hmm. and he only put up sixty-seven point five points, and that's that's. That's definitely rough. Mm -hmm. um, no, no smite is back, uh, but it's still not enough. Mm -hmm. um, like Gusra, he's he's got the Winston play. He can do some Ryan as well. Like he, if if the Spark figure it out, he should be able to figure it out and start putting up points. But at for now, like you don't want to play a main tank, and you definitely don't want to play a main tank on a team that's struggling like this oh, because. Yeah. 
he's just going to get killed a lot, and it's he's not going to be putting in damage. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have actually have two other uh, tanks that are feeders, and both of them scored zero points total this week because both of them were benched, and that's Daco on the rain and Cool Matt on the outlaws. Mm -hmm. um, cool Matt, he's seems like a chill guy. The team still likes him. He, you know, he still has Houston Outlaws stuff on his Twitter. Daco, uh, he removed the team name from his Twitter bio. Jeez. Nobody can really be sure what that means, but in, com in combination with him getting benched and the team doing better with FRD in instead, mm -hmm. um, it really doesn't look good for Daco. I think he's a talented player, but like if your team does well without you in, you shouldn't really get upset and you probably shouldn't do something that's like, like that's just poor media training to yeah. go out there and delete the team name from your bio after they just had their best week. And I don't even know how long, yeah. um, as for cool, Matt, like I, it's, you know, the outlaws didn't win without him in there. You know, spree wasn't, a uh, a gift from God. Spree mm -hmm. played pretty well, but he wasn't incredible. I think whoever's starting at, flex tank for them you don't want to play anyway because the outlaws are in a mess right now they're kind of dealing with uh what spark are dealing with now except they've been dealing with it all season long and houston so. had the they had the chance to make that playoff run but i think with this last week the, those hopes were dashed um yeah and they hit the they hit the brick wall of inevitability so i mean man you're gonna be playing broken mental team now they're like they're just yeah. playing to kind of i don't know for it's fun and then hoping just, to up their trade value, maybe. Let let Jake let Jake hook. Let let Jake let go Jake on Roadhog. Hook. That's all I want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem like a bad option. But yeah. all right. So for the DPS feeders this week, um, again, a lot of these are going to be due to uh, losing maps, and one of those is Sinatra. Only played map five versus the Gladiators, netted a total of sixteen points. So if you were ever curious on how much uh, King of the Hill map would net you in points. It averages you around 16. We haven't had yeah. a player only play one map like that for a while. And so um, the reason he's on the feeders list, despite just because he was l lack of maps, is that Sinatra is, I mean, one of the highest fantasy point scorers we've had throughout the entire season. When, I mean, he was the Zarya player, the plug-and-play, an MVP candidate, obviously. But now he is, mm, I don't know, he's playing well off the bench so i don't know shock maybe will change their tune eventually maybe sinatra will see some more play time but for now sinatra is getting very little play time doing well when he's in but not in terms of fantasy so geez i am yeah. dropping sinatra like a hot rock the other dps we have is hureg got 92 points so yet again under 100 points which we don't like to see but hureg i don't think is losing playing time if i can remember correctly like Hureg and Haxall seem to be the DPS duo for Vancouver, and I mean Vancouver got a ooh, you know the uh, the old four zero from the Washington <laughs> Justice, and um, yeah, dude, that was that was Twilight Zone stuff. Like I don't know, like I, I haven't seen this yeah. in, in many. That's moons. a a classic a classic trap game where you know a team goes into it super confident, expecting to win, and then things just obviously do not work out enough in their favor. I think the. Uh, the big thing there was just the the widow battle. You know, mm -hmm. Hureg has been a great widow. You know, he's shown glimpses, but like Corey is really here for it. Like Corey is so ready to mm -hmm. just dominate right now, and yeah. he is. You know, and I think it's a similar issue that the uh, the Spitfire have, where like, you know, if, if Bird Ring is off on his widow, you know, widow Hanzo, and he's losing that matchup. The, the whole team kind of suffers and they don't have a super sub who can come in, you know, guards not going to come in and dominate on mm -hmm. widow yeah. and the Titans, like maybe it's t maybe they'll have to try subbing in. So I, I haven't seen a widow or um, stitch, I guess, but yeah, but like, cause who seems like he's their widow specialist and he, he's shown those flashes, but Corey, like Corey's ready to take those matchups right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think, yeah, you know, it's, it's very similar to Saya player, uh, out dueling bird ring like if i think right now what matters a lot is how your how your sniper can take that duel and mm -hmm. uh who is pretty pretty obviously not cut out for it yeah that's true yeah uh who that's why he's on the feeders list because yep he thus fed 
Uh, so <laughs> that is going to jump us out of the high noon GG mindset and into the fantasy owl daily mindset. Uh, as always, we had our contest running Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Thank you for those of you who entered. Uh, I didn't do that hot. Teo did pretty decent this week. Um, but up and down, up and down. Yeah, of course. We have to shout out our winner from our Foul Play Friday contest, our featured contest. You win like 50,000 experience on there if you win. Just a <laughs> ludicrous number. So thank you for joining. And congratulations to our winner this week, who is Pacific Monkey, one with 947.26 points. Obviously, the highest that day. Uh, on his roster, he had Jake, Sherford as his DPS line, Mecco and Elsa as his flex tanks, and Shaz and Jonak as his support lineup. Now, that's an impressive team. I'm trying to, like, run the numbers of where he got his cheap players. Um, um, Jake probably was not yeah, ranked Jake super high. Jake was definitely pretty affordable. Um Mecco, Mecco as well. was yeah. very affordable. Mecco was only nine points, so that's okay, the majority of it. He probably he he paid up for um, mm-hmm. Jonak and uh, Shervor, and, and then he probably and Shaz, yeah, yeah, and then he probably paid market value for Elsa, and then paid down by getting Jake and Mecco. And Jake I think Mecco, yeah. the Jake pick actually really, really worked out for him. You mm-hmm. know, Mecco only put up one hundred six, which isn't like horrible horrible it's not as bad it's enough as, to keep you, know, you afloat but not enough to make yeah. you win but paying down for someone like jake to get 163 points is an incredible win so like yeah no that, that was, was a great some, look that was um 2024 site right there so incredible yeah. incredible looking out uh so congrats again to pacific monkey this team looks really good uh another note i had on this was that elsa has been in our foul play friday winning lineup two weeks in a <laughs> row so i'm just saying if you want to win our foul play friday contest make sure that you choose the chang Tu hunter select tank elsa and put them yep. onto your roster that means you win uh no elsa no win that that's just yep. facts cool makes sense uh we also got to shout out two of our other winners on thursday motaku won and on saturday our very own teoyama well done uh oh, congratulations yeah. uh and thank you everyone for joining in again uh i'm loving fantasy owl i i think this is the best format i'm super excited i've been joining some of the competitive games which have been really interesting uh dropping my coins mm-hmm. everywhere um and i'm telling you this is my week you're gonna see the thursday through sunday shout outs for heebie-jeebie across the board uh calling it now this is my week for fantasy yeah um and i just want to give a quick shout out to erster for carrying my saturday yeah. team because he put up like 236 points and i had people who were near 200 oh actually also shout out to unko because uh unko unko put put in some work all right even though they lost he put in his work and I, that was very that was very helpful yeah okay i got fifth overall on the saturday game so i did oh. i did somewhat okay here i i wasn't like feeding like i was in other ones but no that was good, that was good. i mean shaz scored an insane game for me that game violet did really well so my my flex supports and everyone did really good my dps were just kind of average which is where yeah. you were able to defeat me i had soon and decay who oh. both netted around me 150 points just under. Uh, yeah. Not Erster numbers is what I'll tell you. No. Nope. Not Definitely Erster not. numbers. So, uh, unfortunate, but you have to start somewhere if you're going to rise to the very top uh, and er- learn the heart of the cards. So, for this week, as always, uh, we need to come up with a fun mantra for it, but because I, I say it every week, is uh, play your fantasy players that are going to be playing twice in a week and not the ones that are going to be playing once. Uh, that mm-hmm. goes for combined or best map, because a mulligan is always good. Uh, but if you're playing in daily, you don't need to worry too much about this section. So, the teams that are playing twice this week, you have your London Spitfire, the NYXL, the Guangzhou Charge, the Florida Mayhem, Philadelphia Fusion, Washington Justice, Toronto Defiant, and the Houston Outlaws, Seoul Dynasty, Hangzhou Spark, Dallas Fuel, San Francisco Shock, and the Vancouver Titans. And the teams only playing once are the Los Angeles Valiant, Los Angeles Gladiators, Paris Eternal, Chengdu Hunters, Shanghai Dragons. Now, I think that there's two teams with the buy. Oh, never mind. No, Boston does play. So... Atlanta Rain is the team of the bye week, so if you're not going to listen to anything else, listen to this. Do not play your Atlanta Rain players. They will net you zero points and not because of bad substitutions. So, 
the probably the keynote, the cornerstone of our show, if you will, where we give you the best fantasy advice of all time is our potential five mappers. Teoyama, what is one of our games that is going to net that sweet, sweet fantasy points through a map five game? All right, so I will just go with the uh, the first the first on our list, um, probably because it's not in any order of likelihood; it's in order of alphabet, and that is the uh, actually I guess it's not perfectly in order of alphabet, but that's fine. It's uh, the Defiant against the Mayhem. Um, I think that this has strong map five likelihood because both of these teams are on the up and up. Um, the Defiant looked really good last week. Just to recap their uh, performances for each team, the Defiant beat the Dragons 2-1 last week and lost to the Fusion 2-3. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Mayhem, ba -ba -ba, they lost to the Justice 2-3 and beat the Spitfire 3-0. So each team dominated a formerly high-profile team and lost in a tight match to a good upper level team good mid to upper level team okay and i think the, that just shows that like both of them their current form um has a lot of five map potential because they're playing they're they're very competitive now as opposed to before and they also have the potential to go out there and surprise a really good team so i think they're a pretty good match for each other both teams are in a similar place right now I'm personally giving the edge to Florida just because I think Saya player wins the Widow battle. Um, even though Logix was really impressive, I think his McCree was more impressive than his Widow was. Oh, and I think the former teammates Widow duel. That is exciting. It's special. <laughs> it's real special. Yeah, it's, be, it's a great grudge match potential for Logix. Yes. Um, and then, yeah, it's another, like, I'm also really excited to watch that flex tank battle because, uh, you know, uh, Gargoyle has kind of, un unlike Spree, Gargoyle has looked like a gift gift from God for the yeah. Mayhem, and he's been very key to their turnaround. And similarly, Gods has just helped turn it around uh, for the Defiant. So mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm excited by that game. I think it has a good chance to go to five. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. The, I for all those reasons, I would 100 percent agree. Uh, Defiant mm -hmm. have another potential five map this week when they play the Dynasty. Um, I think this one is one of our weaker map fives. I think Dynasty is going to win this one a little more clear in a way. I don't give Defiant enough prowess, I think, to take down Soul. I know Soul has their issues, but I know Soul is also fighting to, like, confirm their playoff spot. Uh, and I don't know, just something about that edge makes me want to give it to Soul. I think that they are going to not want to lose more than Defiant's going to want to win. Um, mm -hmm. But, however, that can still lead up to a good game. Like we said, Toronto's on the up and up, and when you're a team that's got nothing to lose, the up and up, the, the, your skill ceiling is undefined. So yeah. we really don't know. This could be a really competitive match, could score you a lot of points. Uh, the next one I will talk about is um, Excelsior versus Spark. Both uh, both of these teams could replace their logos with just question marks on a black black screen. Yep. Who knows what you're going to see, and when that happens, that can be a total slugfest. And here at Foul Play, we love ourselves a good slugfest. So I am kind of cheering for it. I'm kind of cheering for Spark to come back and defeat the Excelsior. Uh, Excel somehow already have the Atlantic Division locked up because that division yep. is garbage. <laughs> so really, ex I mean, they're to get their playoff spot. I want to see Spark do some work. Um, so I think that game will be really fun to watch and a close match. Yeah, I just to touch on that, like, uh, you know, Defiant and the Mayhem, each on the up and up. I think the Excelsior and the Spark are each on the down and down. Mm -hmm. And uh, still, for us, we don't really care as long as they're evenly matched to a certain extent and the game is exactly. close. Um, it's just funny looking at this game, like, who nobody knows what the Widow matchup is because neither team has settled on a Widow player just yet. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, and then our last five mapper, our last potential five mapper is once again the Mayhem and the Valiant this time. Um, again, you know, to recap, the Mayhem, they, they had their impressive week, 2-3 to the Justice, 3-0 to the Spitfire. Um, and then the Valiant lost 2-3 to the Dynasty and then beat the Fuel 3-1. I think the Dynasty are in a 
a weird spot. So I don't take too much from them. All I take from that game is that the Valiant and the Dynasty are both prone to uh, to slugging it out, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, inconsistency can breed competitive matchups and it can breed um, inconsistency across maps, which helps for going to game five or map five. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think as well, you know, KSF has been really impressive for the Valiant, um, but their their DPS rotation is a little confusing and it's a little unclear. And I think uh, the mayhem, like really like the the emergence of Saya player and uh, and Gargoyle as like a big two is really helpful for them. And Saya player is you know probably the one of the top widows right now, mm-hmm. um, as he always has been. That's kind of been his his one trick uh, skill set. And uh, one thing that I also am excited for is the the fate um, the fate grudge match. You know, I think yeah. when we saw Gamsu get to play against the uprising, the dragons always looked especially fiery. And fate is a, definitely a fiery dude yeah. so it'll be fun to watch him go back at the valiant you know yeah. the, the mayhem have have some mojo right now and from top to bottom you know bare hands talks his talks his junk um and sure. the players i don't think are afraid of doing it either so <laughs> i think it's got yeah. it's got big big slug potential yeah i'm you got me excited for it uh, <laughs> great <laughs> yeah great trailer for that upcoming match yeah um so for our potential uh-ohs um, we have anything that Dallas Fuel touches. Uh, we'll be very afraid yep. of playing them. They're not going to score well, and the teams that are facing them or rolling them, much have you, will not be scoring well either because they're not going to be able to net enough points before the payload hits that final capture point. Uh, another one on here is the Washington Justice versus the Boston Uprising. Boston looks bad, folks. I don't know. I mean, like, I mean, they didn't play last week, so we didn't yeah, get to see they them. they were invisible last week. Right, so maybe this week yeah. off, there it was some hyperbolic time chamber business going on. Maybe Color Hex comes out and is just a dominant Widowmaker, and yeah. Blase can't be stopped on the May, some Fire and Ice stuff going on. Who knows? Um, but right now, the Justice is just looking so good. If you 4-0 Vancouver... You have earned a fan in me. Uh, like, yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. And so I think Justice versus the Uprising and the Outlaws, I think the Outlaws game will be a bit closer than the Uprising one, but, man, both of them, I would be concerned about playing those players, especially on that day. Uh, those daily players, I mean, I guess you play I guess you play Jake because that's how we won the Foul Play Friday. But other than yep. that, I am concerned. <laughs> so those are yeah. our uh, potential uh-ohs. Yeah, a few weeks ago, I would have expected Justice and Uprising to be a, uh, you know, a, a battle of the the bad teams, and it would I would have expected it to go to have map five potential. But right now, I just think, you know, considering that widow, that widow matchup, you know, Corey doesn't seem like he could be touched by mm-hmm. whoever the Uprising put on Widow, and Linkser kind of seems to have vanished for the Outlaws. So yeah. I'm not worried he about did that matchup. this week, I thought, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I'm hoping he'll come back, but I just I don't think he's got I don't think they have a real a real chance. Um, and then the fuel, like they need to figure out who their widow player is gonna be before I think they have a chance against the shock or the gladiators. Yeah, they have a tough week too. Like that is such yeah, a hard. That those is such are a hard really week. difficult matchups. Oh man, and both of them in the same week. That is that is rough. Yeah. Okay, so. We are coming to our sleepers section, which we have said before is done completely within the Fantasy Owl mindset. Uh, Our sleepers last week, we have their average scores if they played twice or just their their normal score uh, and kind of how they played out. So, Teo, you... Did you win? No, I won. You won support, yeah. I won the support category by picking Guido, who and now is just the lock and load flex support for Washington Justice, so sleepy owners beware. But um, Guido got 137.5 points on average. He got 152.8 in the first game and 122.2 in the second game. Um, so doing pretty well for me. And Teo, you chose Neko, who got a 136.1 average. Um, getting 146.5 one day, 125.6 the second. Uh, A. Smith picked Byram. Dude got a 36.9 points average. A. Smith, we love you. Come back. But man, oh man, did those uh, did that sleeper pick not work out for you? 
yeah, I'm I'm not sure if going going to the next roles you should be talking about sleeper picks not working out though. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. We're not gonna talk about I yeah, I I did really well in the support category, but then I, really I well. gambled again and lost it all. Uh yep. <laughs> I, I hit the jackpot my first coin toss. But so before we get to those, let's choose our support sleepers for the week. My yeah. choice for support sleeper of the week, I know I've talked bad about him all episode, and in fact, <laughs> I'm concerned about it now. But at the time, I thought this was a great idea. I'm picking Hagopian. is a 12 point on the salary this upcoming week. I really don't think that he'll be doing as bad as he did last week. And that match against the Valiant, I really do think he can score highly. If Florida has any sense, Byron won't hit the stage. Hagopian will earn you a decent amount of points. Please, bare hands, hear this somehow. Make this decision. You can be in charge. Yeah, I, I actually do do agree with that pick. You know, I think both of their games have map 5 potential. And I think we saw, like, back in the day, he does have frag potential. Mm -hmm. um, I think when your team is struggling, your flex support isn't able to just focus on clicking heads. But when your team is looking better, you know, and the other team is devoting resources to killing Saya player, hopefully that means Hagopian is going to be able to start getting points because I'm, I'm, I want to get him on some rosters for the cheap. Exactly. <laughs> um, although the BRAM thing scares me. Yep. My, my sleeper is in a similar position, and that's uh, Neko. Um, um, defined, I think, both games this week. Mayhem and Dynasty have map 5 potential. He only costs 13, which is right at our cutoff point for uh, sleepers. Um, because, you know, when you take that discount, you can go expensive somewhere else. And uh, he didn't have, like, an incredible week last week, but, you know, he, he scored 68th highest overall in uh, in one game and 105th in another, you know. So it's not not magnificent, but... He showed enough for me to be convinced that in a similar way to Hago Pyun, as teams get more concerned with focusing down other players on their team, he'll be able to have some room to put in work. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I we'll hope have he does. to see. Yeah. yeah. Um, why don't we just jump next into the tanks category? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, let's do it. So for the tanks for last week, that's the stage four week two. Tao, you did win uh, by choosing yep. Mecco, not Neko, in this category. You got a 92.7 average points out of them, which isn't great, but the best of the sleepers pile. Yeah, uh, it's really 106.1 <laughs> in one category, 79.3 in the other day. A. Smith did better than me, still with only a 64.4 <laughs> average. That's right, it gets worse, folks. Uh, Ace, uh, Mano got A. Smith 77.8 points in, in the first day, 50.9 in the second. And that's right, I picked the coolest of mats, um, <laughs> who scored me a hole not applicable um, and didn't play at all. So the zero points making me a terrible loser in that category. <laughs> Um, Houston, I, I actually like Spree, so good on you, but I really didn't like when you made that decision. So, unfortunate, but Teo, since you won, you get to pick your sleeper this week for tanks. Beautiful. Um, and I, I, I will give Spree a shout out too. He actually performed pretty well. I think yeah. he might have, if he had been chosen instead of Cool Matt, he might have won this category. Yeah. Um, that's true. I am going to do it again. I'm going with Mecco. His his point his his cost has risen from nine to ten, which is still super cheap, and um, I still think he's he's worth it. Uh, I especially think especially you know, if you need to to fill out the rest of your roster with a cheap player. Like, yeah, like if you you've gone go hard on a couple other categories, like that is he is a great fill in number. A great and we've fill -in seen number. that. We've seen that from a lot of the winning teams in daily is like if you can pay up for somebody who's going to score over 200 points, then you can pay down and get somebody who costs very little exactly. as long as they're going to play enough maps to put up more than a, a zero. You yeah, know? To keep your head above um, water. That's all you need. Yeah. And I think with a game against the Spark and a game against the Charge, uh, NYXL has a chance to be competitive this week and Mecco should be part of that because there's nobody else to play instead of him unless cool. they choose to do Nene, which would just be silly. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I guess I'll actually give uh, an honorable mention for A. Smith because there was a second tank I was considering. Okay, so we're um, choosing a sleeper for A. Smith, and if he yeah. wins with this one, it's our fault, not his. Yeah, that'll be. I'll we'll, we'll take uh 
well, it's in his honor. You know, it's an honorable mention exactly. in a Smith's honor, and that's a uh, RCK. He only cost twelve this week, mm-hmm. and he hasn't been very impressive. And the uprising have not been very impressive. But they had a week off, and he's pretty cheap. And they played the Justice, which in an in another world in which I hadn't just seen Corey dominate, I would expect that game to be competitive. So mm-hmm. he's a uh, definitely a, a worthwhile honorable mention at that price but, point i mean if the witch's spell that wizard hung uh cast on on the league to make the justice win for a uh, wears off this week then yeah. it could be a competitive match and rck will score a decent points so you're welcome a smith uh yep. my sleeper for the week was gonna be the main tank for the la gladiators uh roar coming in at 13 points to cost um, pretty expensive for a main tank, honestly, but that's because Gladiators have been map fiving it for a while now. Um, I would, jeez, yeah, I don't know. Don't believe me. I suck at these sleepers, but that's who <laughs> I'm choosing. And uh, if you are, for some reason, a heebie-jeebie follower in terms of sleeper picks, then Roar's your man. Uh, map five confirmed. It's gonna happen. So make sure you choose that one. Yeah, map five against against the fuel. This <laughs> against. I hope it doesn't happen, but it the you can't argue if it happened twice in yep. one week that it has to happen the next week. So, of course. <laughs> um, on the last category for sleepers, of course, is the last category that you can select in your Overwatch game that is DPS. Teo, you did win again. Uh, this Let's one go. by quite the landslide. By by a lot. <laughs> um, you definitely saw into the future and chose Corey for 13 points, scoring you 191 on one day and 149 on the second day, averaging you 170.3 average points. That's unbelievable for a sleeper. Seriously, uh, that maybe is the so best sleeper value. pick we've ever had on the show, at least in this format. Uh, Ace Smith did considerably less good. Uh, in fact, I would say bad, but I did worse, so I can't say bad. <laughs> Hureg cost him 12 points, and he scored 87.9 points. Uh, that is his average, because the Vancouver Titans only played once, but they got rolled by the Justice. So, your sleeper pa- uh, pick, in fact, defeated Ace Smith uh, itself. So... Well done to you, Teo. Uh, and Thank then, you. big surprise, I played a player who didn't play any maps at all. Uh, <laughs> I played Ivy of the Toronto Defiant. That guy's not seeing the stage. I got a big ol' N.A. again. So, Teo, you win again. Congratulations. You beat me 2-1 to one Thank this you. week. Uh, but I need you to pick a sleeper that you are going to lose with this upcoming week. Yeah, I, I just want to tail off the Corey thing. Like, getting a guy for 13 points who scored... 191 which is 10th most overall on that day or actually over like across all days is just Mm -hmm. bonkers yeah so like that's exactly why the sleepers category matters because Mm -hmm. like we we mentioned if you can get somebody on the cheap who does fairly well and pay up elsewhere like that's great you know like if you could but if you can package a quarry on the cheap and an erster who's expensive and does well then like you're set up you are Um, richie rich Leading into my sleeper for this week, I do not think he has that kind of potential. But I think for the price point, you know, Corey is very obviously no longer costing 13 um, or under 13 even. This week, uh, the best the best DPS sleeper I could come up with is Libero. Mm. Um, and, you know, I don't think NYXL gives me any... I don't, I don't have any faith in NYXL right now, but... I chose Mecco second week in a row. I'm choosing Libero this time. I, I'm very excited to be proven wrong. And I think <laughs> Libero is his, for, since the dawn of Overwatch, Libero has been known for a wide hero pool, for being a flexible, smart player, um, for being the first to figure out Sombra, the first to do stuff with May. He's so nifty. He's so this. He's, he's crazy so on projectile. <laughs> he's so incredibly nifty. And I think Man. last week I went for a sniper who clicks heads. This week I'm trying to go for the jack of all trades. I'm hoping NYXL can turn it around. The Libero at 13 points. They play the spark and they play the charge. In an ideal world, they can turn it around. The Libero plays the entire time and that that widow because he's not they shouldn't play him on widow it happened once last season i did not enjoy it um 
I think let that second DPS spot rotate, but Libero should play the projectile. He should play the Hanzo, play the Farah, even though they don't want to for some reason. Yeah. Hanzo, Farah, May, all of those things suit his skill set really well. Mm -hmm. So if the rest of the team figures it out around him, then he should be a great value and he should put yeah. up a ton of points. All right, good choice. Uh, yeah. The Aesmith choice that we made this week for him without his consent is Blase. <laughs> uh, like we said, we think Uprising has a decent chance, at least in one of their games. We think against the Justice, maybe not so much. But in terms of people for DPS that are 13 and under, uh, not age, but in terms of points, uh, Blase, I think, could net you a decent amount. Now, my yep. choice, on the other hand, is Top Notch. This is the Corey pick of this week. Uh, the Vancouver <laughs> Titans are not a passive, they are not a sad Yeti. They are an angry, uh, revengeful Yeti. As shown, following the Stage 3 playoffs, they lost to the Shanghai Dragons, but then defeated them the very next week. I am picking Hureg as my sleeper of the week. Only 12 points to cost, so cheaper than everybody else's, but still an incredible player and is not looking like he'll ever leave the stage, which for a sleeper pick that doesn't leave the stage, I'll take it. I will take Hureg, and I think that he's going to score extremely well this week. If nothing else, then I just want to win. Yep. No, actually, I think that's a that's a good a good pick. You know, if if it's true that he's going to play all maps, then they have winnable games against that's the uh, the Spitfire and the Fusion, yeah. and ideally competitive games. And yeah, both those teams are yeah exactly going to be competitive, potentially map five games. So I'm yep. very excited. This week is going to be really exciting because it's always exciting to watch a week of Overwatch kind of after the storm clears. After we have an insane week like we did last week, we kind of get to see where these teams land, how mm -hmm. they play up to each other, and we get to see if streaks continue, if they're brought to a terrible end, uh, namely Justice. What what can they do? Is this going to be ongoing till the end of the season? Are they doing their weird uh, tragedy tour? Is that what's happening? I don't know, uh, but I'm very excited. So make sure you're tuning in this week to watch the games. Yep. Should be should be fun this week, and it's time to to see if the mess starts getting a little a little tidier. If there's going to be some Mary Kondo action, and the league's going to start filing into order, so we can actually yeah. understand what's going on. Exactly. I want my fantasy point points to spark me joy, and so that is what we are <laughs> looking for. Uh, thank you, everyone, so much for tuning in to Foul Play again. This has been episode forty three. Uh, make sure that you're entering our daily leagues on fantasyable.com. We we pay out oh, so much experience so just make sure you're in our <laughs> leagues jumping in there uh congrats to our winners this week again uh remember we shout you out if you're going to be winning any of our leagues and uh yeah you get to compete with us and maybe someone can dethrone teoyama from the saturday tournament i don't know maybe yeah. you guys can try you can talk your junk if you do try but uh I, yeah, don't, I don't exactly. expect I don't expect a lot. Uh, I think the, the next episode will just be a big, there was an attempt because he will be <laughs> on top yet again. Uh, all right, well, thank you so much. I have been Hebe He has been Teoyama. Uh, and until next week, pick Erster. See you guys. <laughs> Adios.